Glidescope Hyperangulated Video Laryngoscopes. A four step technique for Glidescope Hyperangulated Video Laryngoscopy that combines direct vision of the patient's airway with views on a Glidescope monitor. Start by looking in the mouth to introduce the laryngoscope. At the screen to obtain the best glottic view. Back in the mouth to introduce the endotracheal tube. And finally, at the screen to intubate. Begin step one with direct vision, looking directly into the patient's mouth. With the patient appropriately positioned and with a Glidescope video laryngoscope in your left hand, introduce the blade midline into the mouth. Unlike direct laryngoscopy, the hyperangulated video laryngoscope is introduced midline. No lateral displacement of the tongue is typically required. Gently advance the laryngoscope along the curvature of the tongue until the tip of the blade is past the posterior portion of the tongue and into the oropharynx. Step two is performed while viewing the video monitor the entire time. With the hyperangulated blade inserted, look to the monitor to identify the epiglottis, then manipulate the scope to obtain the best glottic view. The glottic view is optimized by a combination of advancing or withdrawing the laryngoscope slightly while increasing or decreasing the tilt to seat the device in the volecula. When the Glidescope video laryngoscope is appropriately positioned, the glottic aperture is centered in the upper third of the video display. With a hyperangulated blade, minimal lift force of only two to three pounds is required. Overall, this provides a wider view of the oropharynx and more working space for intubation. The design of the blade and the location of the camera minimizes the impact of blood and secretions on the view of the airway. During step three, it is very important that you look directly in the patient's mouth and not at the video monitor to introduce the endotracheal tube and watch it pass the posterior aspect of the tongue. This helps avoid potential injury to the tonsils, soft palate, lip, or teeth. The endotracheal tube, which in this case is shaped by a glide right stylet to complement the angle of the hyperangulated video laryngoscope, is inserted until the distal tip of the tube is no longer visible with direct vision. Only then should you return to looking at the video monitor. In step four, focus on the video monitor as you advance the endotracheal tube. Returning your eyes to the video monitor screen gives you a view of the glottic aperture which allows you to observe advancing the endotracheal tube toward the glottic opening. Sometimes a slight withdrawal of the Glidescope hyperangulated blade is required to reduce the viewing angle and allow for optimized ET tube placement. When the ET tube is engaged in the glottic opening, slowly withdraw the stylet five centimeters by using your thumb to push up on the stylet handle or stopper while advancing the endotracheal tube. Do not advance the stylet past the vocal cords. Viewing the entire ET tube insertion step on the video monitor allows you to gently rotate or redirect the tube through the vocal cords. Once the ET tube is positioned per standard practice, hold the tube in place while the stylet is completely removed from the ET tube in an arc toward the patient's feet. To review, the four steps to successful Glidescope hyperangulated video laryngoscopy are 1. In the mouth to introduce the laryngoscope 2. At the screen to obtain the best glottic view 3. In the mouth to introduce the endotracheal tube and 4. At the screen to intubate Glidescope hyperangulated video laryngoscopes